Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm excited to finally do another tag. I know before I took my break and went to a different filming schedule, I was doing like a tag video a week, which I really love doing. They're pretty quick, and I just, I like that some tags and some questions just really make you think. So I found this tag. This is the Not Your Basic Booty Guru tag, and this was created by Agape Love Girl. I'll have her video and her channel linked down below. Now, I loved the questions on this, but for, like, be warned, this is going to be a long tag. There are 19 questions, and they're all kind of, like, in-depth personal questions, so they are going to take a little bit to actually go through all of them. So if you want to sit down for the whole thing, get a snack, get a drink, get comfortable. I also have no idea what my hair is doing. I just kind of gave up on it. It's, I spent an hour washing and doing my hair yesterday morning before work and then I walked to work and it's uh, storming. <laughs> so my hair frizzed and I didn't feel like doing it all again today. So I'm just gonna do my hair tomorrow and once this video is done, it's all just gonna go up in a bun for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm loving this look. Of course, it's the middle of the summer and I decide to do black lipstick, purple eyeshadow and a black shirt, so. That's how it is. I'm wearing the black lipstick. I believe this is from Pretty Zombie Cosmetics. This is the Black Cat lipstick. And on my eyes, all the shadows came from the ABH Riviera palette. I've been on such an ABH kick. Just, ugh. I need to count my ABH palettes. I have like a lot of them. So jumping right into the tag. Question number one is, People tend to think beauty YouTubers are experts, or should be, at doing makeup. Of course, that's not always true. What is one thing you struggle with doing? <laughs> I can name several, but I think the one that I've talked about pretty often recently has been cut creases. I kind of suck at them. <laughs> I've been definitely practicing. I've been using a tool that I got. If you missed the video where I tested out that new tool, I'll throw that up in the cards. But in general, I think cut creases are probably, like, my biggest challenge. Um... Just because that's just like one thing where I see makeup looks and I see tutorials, that's the one thing I really want to get good at because I have hooded eyes and I love the way cut creases look. But they're a bit difficult. <laughs> they're a bit challenging, especially trying to get them to like match on both sides. So I think that's going to be my biggest challenge or definitely the one that comes to mind above pretty much anything else. Question number two is, on that note, are there any makeup techniques you'd like to improve or learn how to do? There's so much I want to learn how to do. Um, Technique-wise, I would love to get better at, uh, like, contouring. I can do, like, a basic powder contour, but I've tried cream contouring a few times, and it looks okay, but it takes me incredibly long. It takes me almost an hour, like, just to do the cream contour part of it. So I would say cream anything is something I would like to learn how to use better, learn how to work with those products better, especially how they mix with powder products. So those in addition to my cut creases because I, I just want to be able to do like a fire cut crease. Just open up my eyes, make them look not as tiny and beady as they are. <laughs> Question number three is, are there any makeup looks, styles, trends, or techniques you absolutely refuse to do or follow yourself? Example, winged liner, false lashes, etc. I don't think there's anything I would refuse to do. There are some things that I'm hesitant to do because I don't think I have the skill to do them. Um, like with the example of false lashes, I, I don't look... I mean, I look really good with them on. I really like how they look. They just take me forever to put on, and I'm not the best at doing that. And also, they can I can, like, feel them the whole day, you know? You do feel your lashes on, but they look so pretty. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything I would flat out refuse to do other than perhaps the perfect Instagram brow, you know, like that perfect drawn on like feathery kind of thing. I've never felt the need to do that. I've always had like way too much hair on my face, TMI. I've always had very bushy eyebrows. I've always had to get like my face waxed or threaded or whatever it was. So I've never felt the need to do that. And really all I do is just fill in my brows a little bit. My brows are kind of an afterthought. Um, so I've never really felt the need to do any of, like, the really intense brow tutorials or brow looks that I've seen, especially, like, the Instagram brow. You know, you're perfectly carved out with concealer brow. Question number five is, are there any beauty slash makeup trends that most people hate that you maybe secretly like? I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, I think just in general, liking a full face of makeup, because I know in my in my everyday, day-to-day -day life, not so many people go around in, in glam or even a full face. Like, 
some girls at work wear makeup but for the most part most people aren't wearing as much as I am so I think in general it's just the overall like I like having a full face of makeup on as opposed to everyone who maybe not may, blah, 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 maybe might not just like having a full face on maybe they just like to do brows or they just like to do this and it's all personal preference so I really think the only thing because I really can't think of anything else. Because I've definitely gotten comments about wearing too much makeup and, oh, maybe your eyeshadow is a bit too much. But other than that, I really don't know if there are any trends that a lot of people hate. Unless it's just, like, people dogging on girls that like makeup just because it's makeup. Because that's just ridiculous and I really hate that. Uh, honestly, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Number six is, are there any makeup rules or stereotypes that bother you? I mean, in general, I don't really think about makeup rules. Uh, as, for, as far as stereotypes, I honestly, like, I don't really think of any. I could just be, like, like, it could just be, like, way over my head and I have no idea. But I can't really think of anything that, like, is a rule other than stuff that kind of makes sense. Like, put your, your liquids on before powders or, um, I don't know. Priming. Make sure you prime. I can't really think of any rules that bother me. Let me know down below if there's any makeup rules that you're aware of and I can respond to them down there because honestly, for the life of me, I can't come up with any. Question number seven is, what old news makeup products that you still love and use regularly? There's so many. I have such a big collection. I still need to go through and like rediscover things and like go through. But I think some of the older products that I personally love are uh, my ABH subculture palette. I've been panning that. I've been using that. It's definitely an older product by now. So it's not really in the spotlight anymore. I love my... I have a couple of highlighters that I really love that don't really get a lot of hype anymore and that's something I'm really surprised about like you know when a new highlighter comes out like the new ABH Amorese new it came out a while ago but like it gets hyped up and it's like the center of attention for like a month and then like it goes away I mean I think the Amorese came back and it's now I don't know if it's a permanent product or not uh, I never picked it up but it just amazes me how hyped up highlighters get and then like no one really talks about them anymore but a highlighter that I really love that's older is from Fenty so this is from the first highlighter release and this is the kilowatt freestyle highlighter in lightning dust and fire crystal so I totally panned the lightning dust side that's totally empty and I hit pan on the fire crystal side I used to be hesitant to wear fire crystal because it is a, a very bright highlight in like day-to-day -day wear it doesn't show up as bright blinding on camera but for an everyday highlight this is pretty blinding I've been reaching for it again just because I actually really like how it looks now and it just ugh. I really like it and I already had pan on it so I've been using this a lot more recently and I don't really hear people talking about these original split pan highlighters from Fenty anymore really it's been all about the new you know the body lava this the blah 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 that I'm trying not to give too much away from another video I have coming up I really want to do a video on um, my upcoming favorites and most of that favorites video is gonna be older products that I've rediscovered so that will be coming out towards the end of June because I do my favorites videos every two months or so so I think the last one I'm gonna talk about is probably a foundation so this foundation is definitely not new anymore this is from Maybelline this is the fit me matte and poreless for normal to oily skin and it's the foundation in the shade 122 creamy beige Totally the wrong foundation shade, not my right undertone, but I've been mixing this with a white mixer and with some of my golden drops, and this has just been coming in clutch during the summer and during the heat. So I've gone back to this. I've actually almost panned this whole thing. It's like down to here now, and I have to like scrape out the rest of it. But this foundation has been so good, and I hear people mention it here and there, but it definitely doesn't get hype of like a new foundation release anymore question number eight this is very interesting it's possible that there may be a specific youtuber that inspired you to start a youtube channel but let's talk about what if anything youtubers inspired you not to do <laughs> yeah first off uh i definitely saw quite a few videos especially sponsored videos where people talked about products that they had not used yet but talked about how much that they're sure that they were going to love them. What? 
that actually got me to unsubscribe from my channel because she was doing a sponsored video about this line of products and she was talking about each product and how she used each one and then she got to one and she said oh I haven't tried this one out yet but I'm sure I'm gonna love it no <laughs> so I mean I that was before I think that was before I started no no I think that was right after I started my channel um so that really inspired me to really focus on products that I've used and that I've tested because that's kind of the whole point of these product review videos at least is that you really want to hear from someone who's not sponsored doesn't have a million subscribers like whether or not the product works and what it works well for or what type of skin it works well on you know that kind of stuff you don't want to hear someone who's being paid by a company to say oh this is great like because you're, you're not learning anything from that. All you know is that that person sold out for money. So yeah, being careful around sponsored content, being careful about what kind of PR you accept. I definitely learned that from YouTubers. I think I've also, uh, after I've started my channel, I've really gotten into the habit of like picking apart YouTube videos, like really looking at like the angles they film and how they film reviews and what they actually consider a review. Um, that's one thing I never also really wanted to do was just a first impression and call it a full review. I always want to try things out a few times, do a full day wear test, like nothing bothers me more than when someone reviews a foundation and like they just put it on and then that's the end of the video, that's it. They don't wear it throughout a day. Just like, what's the point of that? <laughs> So a lot of little things like that. I've also picked up things about uh, like editing. I've definitely learned a lot of editing things just from watching other people's videos and looking up how to do certain things. Um, but I think in particular, like the one thing I learned not to do was to, to sell out. Was to be honest. Don't say you like a product when you haven't even touched it yet because what the hell. That made me lose all confidence in that person and I immediately unsubscribed. Like there's no point. I can't trust you. Question number nine is what beauty content do you love creating the most? Oh god, I love creating most of my content. I think the only things that get a little bit annoying to me is when I have to do different camera angles, like trying to film with a clutter. I always worry about like, can you see everything? Is the lighting okay? So those get a little bit more complicated, but I really especially love filming, uh, reviews so like foundation reviews eyeshadow palette reviews and tutorials when i get the chance i know tutorials aren't really that popular anymore but when i found a look that i really loved and actually had the time to sit down and put together a cute video pick out some nice music like oh, i loved those videos so i really do want to do more tutorials moving forward but i know that not many people are looking at them or watching them anymore so i've tried to balance that out and instead of actually balancing it out i just really stopped doing them so i definitely want to get back into that because i really did love filming those question number 10 is is there any content that you create based on audience request or interest that you actually don't really like or prefer to create no, not really. Uh, I really, whenever anyone suggests a video, I have like my Word document where I keep all of like my filming schedule and my video ideas and everything. So whenever I get a suggestion, I'll throw it in there. But for the most part, whenever I get a suggestion from someone, it's so good and I'm really excited to film it. So I kind of just like get hyped up and get ready to film it. Like, I don't think I've ever gotten a suggestion where I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do that. Like, because I don't know, I, I really like filming <laughs> i really like doing these videos i really like maintaining my channel so if it felt like that i wouldn't film you know maybe anything outside of makeup i don't know but i still like filming hair videos too uh i don't know no one's really requested anything that i didn't, didn't want to do or think was an awesome idea question number 11 is how often do you film so i mentioned earlier that i have my calendar kind of set up i've got a google doc i'll throw i'll blur it out a little bit so i'm not spoiling too much but i'll throw up kind of an idea of what my schedule looks like right here so i tend to film in the mornings before i go to work or on the weekends um so i typically tend to film the most on monday tuesday and wednesday mornings 
whatever depending on what videos I have to film if they're kind of like a quicker video like an update or a mainly talking video I can film that on one of those mornings but if it's a longer video where I have to do like looks or swatches or if it's an out there kind of look like this I'll film it on a Friday or a Saturday so on a given week I'll film two or three times and I try to film at least two videos every time, but I don't always do that. Sometimes I only have time to sit down and film one video. So there's a lot of factors to take into account there, but for the most part, I film anywhere between two to three, maybe, maybe, maybe four times a week. Question number 12 is, do you have a job outside of YouTube? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do have a full-time job that I really like. Um, I work in publishing. I'm kind of like a junior editor. Uh, and I really like it. Um, I go into the office four times a week and then the fifth time a week on Friday for the most part I work from home and now during the summer It's actually really nice because my Fridays are half days So I only have to work until noon, which is really nice. I'm actually filming this after noon So I worked this morning. It's a Friday. I worked all morning put away all my stuff did my makeup and now I'm filming this Question number 13 is what beauty content do you enjoy consuming slash watching the most? I really like seeing uh, Project Pan updates, uh, declutters, I love declutters, and I love chatty reviews. Like think of uh, like Teresa is dead, I love her reviews. I, I also love her story time, so uh, those I think those are the main ones that I really like watching uh, just because they're things that for the most part if I'm doing other stuff I can kind of listen to them too like in the background but I also like taking the time like at night YouTube is my main source of entertainment and I know we're going to get the, into that a little bit later on about stuff outside of makeup that I like watching but it's my main thing I don't really watch movies that often I don't really watch TV ever it's really just mainly YouTube so I like to listen to some things in the background I'll listen to documentaries in the background maybe while I'm working but those are the main beauty things that I like to watch because I can do them either or I can either put them on in the background and listen to them or I could sit down really get engrossed and watch them yep and that was the next question so question number 14 is are there any non makeup channels you love yes <laughs> Uh, makeup is just one part of what I watch on YouTube. It's definitely a bigger part of it, but I, like I said, I get all of my entertainment from YouTube, so I watch a lot of stuff. I'll throw in a few of my favorite channels, like, in that section and the questions down in the description box, but, like, off the top of my head, there's just so many channels. I love watching documentaries. There's a new documentary, like, biography channel that I just found that I've been loving. I love listening to like the kind of they can kind of get repetitive and boring but I do like reddit so I do like listening to the videos where people read out things from certain subreddits or if it's like the ask reddit and people read out the comments I like those too um I also I really like anime so I like watching a lot of anime like analysis or uh listening to a lot of anime music I have got a whole music playlist that's not even getting into like the music that I listen to on YouTube because that's a whole nother thing uh but I like watching a lot of like anime reviews anime analysis um analysis in general like I just watched the new season of Black Mirror I loved it um and everyone loves to analyze Black Mirror you look for all the easter eggs I love those videos too I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> but there's just literally so many <laughs> channels and so many types of content that I love to watch and it's great because literally I can tailor what I watch to exactly what I want to watch like I that's the best part about YouTube is that even if I think I have an obscure interest there's someone who's made an hour-long video about it <laughs> cool I'm gonna sneeze again oh my god I think allergies are just finally kicking my butt now. Question number 16. Yes. Nope. I can't. 15. It's 15. I can't count. Question number 15 is, are there any makeup misconceptions because of YouTube or Instagram that you wish people knew the truth about or that you hope to change with your channel? I think that was, I mentioned it earlier, just the whole mistrust like that you really never can tell who is giving a product a good review is it because the company paid them is it because they got the product for free is it like there's so many things that go behind it and I felt that when YouTube was smaller when the beauty community was smaller that wasn't a big worry um because I felt like everyone it felt like you were all sitting in your rooms like this and just like talking to each other as opposed to now where everything is like a studio production and people have managers and there's so much PR and sponsored videos and there's people not disclosing their ads or not disclosing their sponsored videos now it's just like 
what's going on. <laughs> So I, I really did want to change that with my channel. Um, I've received PR a total of uh, once <laughs> and I disclosed it in the video and I talked about the product. I buy everything with my own money and I just I do it because I love makeup and I love being creative. This is my creative outlet. So I really wanted to do this because I felt passionate about it and I really wanted to do honestly the fun videos that everyone else was doing. Like I wanted to do favorites videos. I wanted to do reviews. I wanted to do this and I did it <laughs> and I have so much fun doing it still and I just hope that comes across in my channel like I just I've made so many good friends here and that's what I want my channel to be I want it to be a place where you can come relax learn something nice and have fun question number 16 is if you could collaborate with a wait I can't count I cannot read these oh. Question number 16 is, have you ever felt unqualified or like a bad beauty YouTuber because you didn't do things just like every other beauty guru? A bit, yeah, when I first started, especially when I first started because I didn't have the equipment. Uh, whenever I had a video that I loved but that the lighting made me really washed out, I felt really bad because I like I liked the video still but like looking back on it you can't tell because everything's washed out you can't tell what I was applying to my face back to like the decluttering videos I would do a full declutter then look back on the footage and like it's washed out and it's hard to see and it's like ah uh, am I am I a bad youtuber am I bad at this uh it's it's all a learning curve it's all about uh learning how different aspects of filming works it's not particularly the makeup it's your not even your I don't even want to say your equipment because you don't need fancy equipment to do this you just need to know how to finesse <laughs> your resources and what you have you need to understand how lighting is you need to have like three points of lighting at least you need to have a light behind you in order to like light up your background so that you don't look like a pale ghost in the middle of a dark scary bedroom that's gonna jump scare someone just like things like that so I think the most parts where I felt unqualified were when my filming wasn't really up to par but I feel like now I've definitely like gotten a lot better with my lighting with my filming and it makes me so happy when I hear someone like or hear someone when I read someone's comment that says oh did you get a new camera it looks great and really all I did was fiddle with the settings on this camera because I never did that before you know so definitely not perfect but I'm definitely better than where I was and it took a bit to stop a uh, beating myself up over that. Am I gonna get the next question wrong? <clears throat> question number 17 is, if you could collaborate with a brand, which would it be and what would you create? Uh, uh, I, f I would have to be an eyeshadow palette because I love eyeshadows so much. Um, and since I've just been on such a huge ABH kick and they just came out with a bang and collab, I would love to do an eyeshadow palette with ABH. That would be awesome. <laughs> I don't even know like what colors would be. I would love to see, um, like a palette of earthy tones like greens and maybe a blue browns like oh, I would love that in like the ABH formula just mm, yes so that would be my palette <laughs> I would love that uh, it's never going to happen but a girl can dream question number 19 is would you rather collaborate with a brand or create your own makeup and beauty line <laughs> no, no well if anyone learned anything from Jacqueline Hill I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I've thrown enough shade on that just you know, for now. For now. This isn't ever going to be my full-time job. I can say that right now. Um, so I wouldn't ever want to create my own makeup line. That's not something I've ever thought about or ever wanted. A collab would be awesome though. I would love to do a collab. <laughs> just like I said, probably eyeshadow, but you never know. Like, you know how Sigma does those collabs with, like, the brush kits where you get to pick your favorite brushes? That was genius on them marketing-wise, but I would also, I would love to have one of those. Like, I've got Sigma brushes that I really love, except for this one that fell apart on me. Thankfully, it's within, like, the warranty period, so I just submitted a claim to Sigma. I'm waiting to hear back from them to see if they're going to send me a new brush or whatever, but... Overall, I really love Sigma brushes, so I would love that, or an eyeshadow palette, or maybe a lipstick, a black lipstick collab. Ooh. So the last question, question number 19 is, because your average booty guru doesn't typically do this, it's shout out time. Name three beauty content creators you think deserve more followers or recognition. I'm going to name a couple more than three. 
just because I really want to shout these creators out. Some of my favorites are Christina Cheng. She's got an awesome channel. We've done a couple of collabs together and I love her content. She puts videos out five times a week. She deserves all the subscribers, just all of them. Rare Beauty Envy. She is in school full-time. She is a, a full-time mother, of course. She's got some beautiful, beautiful children, and she still makes videos, and she's got an awesome makeup collection, and she's really active on Instagram, too, so she deserves so many subscribers and Instagram followers lover. Um, another channel I mentioned before, Teresa is Dead. She's definitely been getting some more subscribers recently. I subscribed back when she had, I think, like 4,000 subscribers, and now she's at like 7.5, which is awesome. But I still think she deserves so many more subscribers. Her, I love her videos. Her story times keep me entertained and crack me up, and I, <laughs> I love, I love her videos. And another channel that I absolutely love is Kaylee Wesley. She's got an awesome channel. She does Project Pans, Pan That Palettes, and I love her eyeshadow looks, her eyeshadow like little tutorial. She does like the one look per pan kind of series, which is really creative because I have never really thought about doing like a whole look with one shade. Like, because you can do that. I've seen videos where people use different brushes or different techniques to get different looks out of the same shade in an eyeshadow palette, which is fascinating. So she totally deserves a lot more followers, a lot more subscribers, and I just love, love her eyeshadow looks. And I love the way she opens up her video. She's like, hello, beautiful eyeshadow lovers. And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's me. I'm an eyeshadow lover. So that is everything for this tag. I know that was a bit of a longer video, but I really liked going through this. Let me know down below if there's any other new tags that you would like to see me do, or if you do this video, please let me know. I would love to listen to your videos, love to listen to your answers to these tag questions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.